us join together in our prayer of the faithful. Surrounded by a rich heritage of faith, we seek to know you, God, in this time of worship. After all you have done for us, God, we have failed to bear fruit for you. We have turned away from your word and have forgotten to call on your name. People who are weak, lonely, and destitute receive little help from our hands because we are preoccupied with our own concerns. Lift us from the shadows of our own deceits and let your face shine on us so we may walk once more in your truth. Amen. When we are penitent, God restores us to our rightful identity as children of the Most High. God lights a fire within us so we can change our world for the better. In the name of Jesus Christ, who endured the cross for us, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see how regard for this vine, the stalk that your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance, but let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. 
Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. So ends our reading from Psalm 8. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29, through chapter 12, verses, or verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more shall I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and all the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, ordained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings to us so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. May God bless the reading of this word. <coughs> and our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 12, verse 49 through 56. I came to bring a fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and so <coughs> it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? 
O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Some may be confused by the division that we see in, in Luke chapter 12. And one item, one, when, when Jesus says father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, and so forth, I believe that Jesus is telling us to make our relationship with Jesus to be more important in our relationships here on earth. That is, if, if we have a relationship in our lives that we know is distracting us from pursuing and persevering on our walk with Jesus, then that is a relationship that we should put as lesser priority, as lesser importance than the relationship with Jesus Christ. Many times we may be held back by a relationship that uh, we feel like we are obligated to maintain and to persevere through. However, the most important relationship, and again, the most important conversation that we have is always with God. So I think that this, I, I believe that Luke 12 here helps us to focus, and though that may cause divisions among people on this earth, those divisions are better to have than a division with God. We may ask, as Hebrews 11 asks, what does it mean to persevere? Perseverance means that we try to accomplish and, and keep going. We try to accomplish something and keep going, even when something seems to be impossible. We might persevere in a marathon, or a lighter task than a marathon, uh, but uh, I know when I've gone through marathons, I've been tempted to stop around mile 13, maybe up to 16, thinking that I cannot go on any further, and wondering why I put myself through the agony of doing such marathons. But that is a time when we can persevere and push through to reach that finish line, because when we do reach that finish line, it feels so much greater than anything we may have previously experienced. So ask yourself what may be what may be your finish line? What may be that thing that you have wanted to do and have not yet reached? Perhaps it is a closer walk with God, perhaps eliminating something that has been taken away from your walk with God. Or perhaps it is something constructed that you want to do to deepen your relationship with God. Pray more, read scripture more, confess more often, adore God more. Last week we reviewed adoring God and how it is important to adore God and praise God in our relationship with God. It is also important to pray with confession. When we persevere through whatever task we are facing and persevere toward our finish line, whatever that finish line may be for you, we are engaging in purposeful living with the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and in rejoicing. The Holy Spirit is here to help us on the road through anything that we may face. All we need to do is call on the Holy Spirit. Even when things do not seem to be going our way, and often things do not seem to be going our way. 
even when things do not seem to be going our way, we are to call on the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2 again states, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that, that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, who have perfected or worked on perfecting the faith and growing their relationship with God before us, who have set us an example to follow. They as well, they have set an example to lay aside the weight and the sin that clings to us, and that is removing everything that takes us away from being focused on a relationship with God. And always, we look to Jesus in everything, who is the pioneer, who starts our journey, and who perfects that journey as well. Now, in verse 2, Hebrews tells us that it is for the sake of the joy that Jesus endured the cross, the sake of the joy that was set before him, that Jesus endured that cross. And it is also for the sake of the joy that you see, that we see, that we all see, that we are called to persevere. It is for the sake of the joy that God promises us, even if we do not see it now, even if we are struggling to see that joy right now. It is for the sake of the joy that we are eventually promised that we are called to persevere. And we can persevere by confessing to God when we make a mistake and also pressing on toward pursuing the kingdom of God in whatever way we know how. There are seven ways that uh, I will briefly suggest uh, how we can confess to God and how we can be, how we can confess to God while being in a right relationship with God. The first, the first uh, part to remember is that we should confess in a private space not because we need to hide it from other people, but because we do not need to flaunt our confessing with other people. Jesus tells us that those who pray in private, uh, or Jesus tells us to go uh, pray in private so that we do not pray in public and then think about how good we look to others just because we are praying and confessing or praising God. So confessing in a private space, one, there's less distractions, and two, you are doing you are doing the confessing just between you and God. The second piece uh, that we can learn how to confess to God is to be humble. If we are not humble, we will be focused on always. Uh, we, we will be focused on how maybe maybe how good our relationship with God is, and not where the flaws are. If we are humble, we are more able to recognize that we are only human. We do make mistakes, and we need to recognize that if we are going to not allow that to take away from our relationship with God because pride does take away from our relationship with God. It causes us to feel that we do not need to do anything more because we are already in, good, in a good relationship with God. But in truth, there is always something more 
that can be done to pursue God. And to pursue that, we need to be humble, to recognize that we make mistakes, and to recognize that there is always more that we can do to pursue God. Third, we can ask for forgiveness for what we have done. We all make mistakes, and we all need to rely on God for forgiveness. When we make a mistake and we wrong another neighbor, we also say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me for doing this thing, whatever it is that we did? And we should have the same relationship with God where we ask for that forgiveness. Fourth, we can ask what should be done next. And we're having a conversation with God as we are doing this. And these steps can also help us to maintain that, that, uh, that conversation with God as we are praying. We can ask God what we should do, how we can move forward from this. How can we not be tempted by whatever this is in the future? Fifth. We should not make the same mistake twice. If we tell God that we are sorry and we do not want to do whatever brought us away from God again, but then we go back and do the same thing again, we may not have truly been committed to that cause. Have you ever had someone uh, in your life who uh, apologized for doing something and then did it again the next day? Maybe, maybe it was a child uh, who uh, was late to curfew or late to dinner or something like that. Uh, and, he said, and, the, and the child said, I'm sorry for being late. It won't happen again. And then the next day, it happens again. When that happens again in our relationship with God, if we say, I'm sorry for uh, committing this sin, or I'm sorry for not loving you more, or I'm sorry for not praying to you more, God, and then we don't actually do anything to change that, to try to help us to pray more, or try to help whatever sin that was that we did to try to lessen the impact of it or try to lessen the occurrences of it. So we will never truly eliminate it, but we can always minimize the impact of it while we're here on this earth. If we don't show commitment to not making the same mistake twice, is our confession truly a confession? Six, we should explain if we need to. God is a friend to us. It is not going to the principal's office and trying to take in everything that the principal is telling us and saying to us. Uh, it is not, there may be some similarities, but it is, you don't have to go to God with that fear that you'd walk to uh, if you were in trouble at school or in the office, for example. Uh, I know if if you get called to a private meeting with your boss at work, for example, it may be a little nerving going to that office wondering what is going to happen. We do not need to go to God with that same apprehension. We can talk to God like God is a friend, like God is our best friend, because in reality, God is our best friend. So we can explain what happened we can explain why we think it happened and how we may be able to do better the next time. And if we don't know how, we can tell God that we don't know how and we need God's help. But regardless, we do not need to hold anything back because we can explain to God exactly what we are thinking and exactly what was going on in our minds. And seventh, you do need to accept the consequences. 
Even though God forgives us, there are always consequences for what we have done, and we need to realize that, uh, whether it is uh, breaking a relationship or uh, whether it is uh, doing something that had an impact, uh, some, of the, some of the divisions that we can cause through our activities or through not following God really closely can be lasting. And if we play a role in creating a division that is not of God, then we do need to be held accountable to that and try to do our best to mend that crack, to mend that broken relationship, whether it is between you and another uh, or, of course, yourself and God. So when you are, so confession is one of our major uh, themes uh, and ways to pray. And we need to be sure that we confess so that we are always pursuing a, a constant relationship with God. First, we adore God. Second, we confess to God. When we persevere through every trial and every struggle that we face, we are pressing on through whatever lies before us toward a greater kingdom of God. First, confess in a private space. Second, be humble. Third, ask for forgiveness. Fourth, ask what should be done next. Fifth, do not make the same mistake twice. Sixth, explain to God if you need to. And seventh, accept the consequences. But we know when we do follow these steps and when we do approach God with all of these things in mind, we are approaching God with an unhindered spirit in an unbroken relationship that we can mend and continue mending and persevere toward and press on for the goal of the kingdom of God every single moment of our lives. So may all glory and honor be to God. Thanks be to God and amen. Let us sing our middle hymn, which many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with. Uh, we know that Jesus loves us, uh, as, uh, and, and that can be an encouragement to approach God as well, because we know that Jesus loves us because the Bible tells us so. Let us sing together our middle hymn, Jesus Loves Me, found in our green books, number 437.
are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, people of generations before us who have given their all in faithfulness to God. Much is required of those who make a faith commitment. We give not out of a sense of fear or duty, but because it is a joyful opportunity to express thanks for all we have received. Will the ushers come forward to receive this morning's offering? Sight. 
Give us your eyes to recognize the signs before us. We trust in your provision and loving kindness. Use these gifts and our lives that we might bear your fruit with praise and thanksgiving. We ask this in the confidence of your mercy and love. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to our time of joys and concerns in this service, uh, we will have to study this again next week because she's not here with us not here with us this week, uh, but happy birthday, happy uh, second birthday to Elise Hoover. <laughs> if she's here with us next week, we'll get her next week. Uh, also, happy birthday to Stuart Smith, uh, it is tomorrow, and happy anniversary to Stu and Dana Smith. This is Stuart, but it's really good. everyone knows him as Stu Smith. <laughs> But happy anniversary to Stu and Dana Smith uh, as well on August the 19th. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns uh, I, to share with us this morning? Deb. Okay, I have a big joy. <laughs> um, Tara and Reed are expecting. Oh. So, yeah, January. So if you see them. Okay, you win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this be your first? Oh, yes, my first grandchild, <laughs> and um, on the Seaver side, it will be number five. So. Oh, okay. So, yes. That, yeah, that is certainly uh, very exciting news. So, congratulations to you and to them. Thank you. Any other joys or concerns to share with our congregation today? Uh, Shirley Dick is still in the Willows Rehab Center, uh, room 304. Uh, so she, she will probably be there for some time. Uh, so prayers for her, continued prayers for her are appreciated. If there are no others, then let us pray together. O oh God, from whom all good things come, give us grace to live to your glory. Give us respect for each other and for all your creation. Fill our lives with a sense of wonder and give us wisdom in all our dealings. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. All things come from you, Lord, all goodness and good gifts. May we see your love and grace in all that is about us. In all that is about us, help us to enjoy the world with the great love that you have for the world. May your church be seen as good stewards of your creation, using its resources to the benefit of others and to your glory. We pray for the work of Christian aid and relief organizations. Lord of all creation, may you keep us in your love. Help us strive to stay deeply connected to you as we pray for our own deepest needs. and for the need of another. We pray that we will all remember that life cannot be bought or sold. Remember all who are not paid fairly for their work. We pray for places of deprivation and for nations that are suffering from bankruptcy. We give thanks for all that you have given to us. May we use what we have received for the benefit of others 
and to your glory. We pray for all who have enriched our lives by their care and their generosity. Bless our homes and our, lo and our loved ones and keep us in your peace. May the community in which we live be an accepting and hospitable community. Lord of all goodness, we remember before you all suffering people, the war-torn, the weary, the malnourished, and the starving, all who were driven out of their homes and off their land with the greed of others, and all who have been robbed of their livelihood or of their health. Holy God, who comes to us in breath, visits us from the throne of heaven, and sets us aflame with amazement and joy. You open our paths to new visions and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. We pray especially for those among us who are in difficulty at this time, remembering all who are ill or unable to cope on their own, that they may know your love and protection. We pray for Bob Bowman, Judy Boyer, Bill Carroll, Shirley Dick, Mike Hamer, Jay Jackson, Roger Kinney, Suzanne Kabko, Dawn Naylor, Jack Ryan, Dorothy Sherk, John Shumway, Eric Smith, Etta Meissner. May your rod and your staff comfort them and grant them peace. We also pray for the family and friends of those who have recently died. May you meet them, God, in their anger and in their grief. Lord, give us faith to trust your presence through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
<coughs> Before I give the benediction, I feel called just to mention this briefly. Uh, this, this hymn was uh, one of the favorites of one of the members in the, uh, that I attended in Albany, at the church that I attended in Albany when I went to school up there. And uh, the favorite hymn of that member, uh, and she was uh, given a about a week diagnosis. They think she only has a week left to live at this point. Uh, and I'm thinking of her and that family while I'm singing this song. Uh, so you'll feel called to uh, pray, even though you don't know her. Her first name is Ruth. Uh, so I could not help but think of her as you picked that song and sung that song. Uh, I think it's a lovely song, and I hope you all enjoy that uh, as well. Now, since you have been raised with Christ, may you seek the things that are of God and go forth to live lives worthy of your calling. May the God who gives us every good gift bless you and keep you in the mind of Christ by the power of the Spirit who sustains us all. Amen.